Morning, Arthur. You ready? Well, give me a minute. Coffee? Sure. There you go. So, what's your plan? Well, we'll see if we can track them, but we might need to lay bait to draw them out. Bears like fish, obviously, but they also have a sweet tooth. A lot of fellas bait, then shoot from the trees, but I prefer to hunt on the ground. More dangerous. But we'll have a much better chance of getting a good shot in. And if he bolts, we can start right off after him. Can you mix up this bait for me while I finish packing this up? Sure can. Fish, berries. I tie it up in that rag when you're done. I hope you know what you're talking about. I grew up in the mountains, Arthur. I was virtually weaned on bear meat. Okay. I think I got this done. All right. Good. Pack up and we'll get going. What's the hold up here? Okay. Let's go. How would you deal with that as a person who offered asylum and is rejected? You gotta, it's your decision to, you have to manage your own anxiety on that diligent. Um, if a person rejects asylum from an abusive relationship, you have to trust that they're making the right decision for themselves or that there's some reason that you don't understand for why they're doing that. Um, this is why it's important not to get over involved in other people's relationships. You can, you can be there for a person who is the victim of abuse. You can provide emotional support. You can encourage them to get help. But ultimately, if you offer asylum and they don't do it, you, you aren't responsible for that other adult. There's probably a good reason for that. So if at that point you get worried, you can't expect a person who is in an abusive relationship to take care of you for your anxiety about them being in an abusive relationship. That's just further making problems for them. So as much as people want to help, this is what makes abuse so terrible. This is why if, People shouldn't abuse other people because it creates these awful scenarios. But if a person rejects that asylum, there's nothing you can do. Uh, that's that's their decision. It's down by the water. That's where I saw him last. Okay. How's that horse treating you? Uh, potentially, Shelbs. Good. Absolutely, yes. You know, I was in this area with Bessie years ago. Who's Bessie? Really? I didn't know that. I imagine you still miss her. Every day. Did you two ever think about getting out of the life? No, we did briefly. You don't remember? Guess you were still young. Didn't last long. I drifted back into it. She understood. She knew what I was. I remember you not being around for a while, but well, things were looser back then. Truth is, there's never really any getting out. And staying in, it's hard. You know that. But Bessie and I made it work. Why? You thinking about getting out? Me? No, of course not. Listen, if Dutch's grand plans work, and we can make enough money to go someplace new, really new, maybe we can all have a new start. Anyway, for now, let's try and chase ourselves a bear, shall we? Let's look by the water here, see if he's been fishing again recently. Man, you know, I just, everybody talking about, oh, if Dutch's grand plan goes through and we get the money and we find a new place, we get to start anew. I don't think this group knows what that actually means. I really don't. I don't know if this group is prepared for everything that's going to come along with that. That's a huge unknown. And Dutch, being the leader of this, had damn well better have a plan. Because if all of a sudden, you know, if we've been spending years, I mean, we're talking decades at this point, of people basically being outlaws, orienting themselves to the world and to society in the way that they have, you don't just all of a sudden make a complete 180 on that just because you achieve what you wanted to achieve. You, that's just not how it works. Individuals are hard enough to move, let alone groups. This You're asking this group collectively to give up what they've known for decades for something that is just dripping with unknowns and anxiety. 
that does not bode well for groups. And so that's where some of Dutch's idealistic language about when we get freedom, what will this mean for us or whatever, like we are, we are avoiding conversations about who we are by thinking about what we might be. And we don't even know what that is because we don't know the circumstances that are going to facilitate that. And everybody's bought into this. And I don't think any of them really fully understand what they're buying into. And we see that, right? Like we robbed the train. We still need to do more. 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 That's what we know. Chasing a carrot is what this group knows. And if you think that it's going to be super easy for them to just get out of that mindset, absolutely not. Humans don't work that way. At all. Let's find this bear. Look for tracks, dung, bones, any sign of him. You have entered legendary animal territory. Got tracks over here? Oh, well, there's some ball marks here, Jose. They sure look big enough. Ooh, they do. I hope it's him. Can you tell which way he went? Yeah, he went this way. This way. Oh, baby. I really hope I got a big gun on me because I got to shoot a bear. I don't think a bow and arrow is really going to get it done. Half-eaten fish here. Must have been left by our friend, I reckon. Come on, see if there's anything else. Yep, more over here. Something else on the ground, just here. There she is here. Watch your step. Looks real fresh. Reckon he's got to be close. Let's keep going. Hosea has the elephant rifle. It's good. I guess maybe he's going to take the shot. I'm just doing the tracking. Damn it. Looks like the trail ends here. We lost him? For now. A little optimism, Arthur. Well, what do you think? I think we split up in each look. Either that or we could place bait here. That could work? Which do you think? Let's bait here. Fine by me. Let's leave the bag over there. By those boulders up ahead, looks like a good spot for it. Ooh, I heard a growl. Plant the bait near the large stones. Do you think it's easier to believe the pseudo-solution of the plan than facing reality when it's done as a group? I feel it would be harder to sell a just one person hard mentality and all. Yes, I would think so, monkey. Uh, I mean, when you've got a group of people that are lost and don't really have a sense of who they are outside of the group they belong to, yeah, like the plan is a hook. But then sometimes the plan becomes the identity. Like the chase of the plan becomes the identity instead of the plan itself. Like the chase of freedom is who we are, not free people. And that's where Dutch is so important here as the leader. It's to, because I, like what Marty has said, yeah, people could leave at any time. 
And they could find their own way, but they don't. should set it up by those boulders at the bottom of the hill. All right, hold B to open the satchel. Air meat. Let's go ahead and set it down. Now we wait. Go to the rocks. Wait for the bear. Okie dokie. A thousand pounds, you say? More or less. Big scar down his face. Hey, did that bait look okay to you? I think so. You're the expert. Ready with your gun there? I'm good. You okay? You seem nervous. So do you. I'm fine. Let's just take a look at that bait. Sure. Come on. We only just said it, Jose. I know, but we need to do this right. What do you got me setting it for if you got high standards, man? There's always a way out of it, Sloppy. It's just whether you want to take on the cognitive pain of it. Right? Do you think at any point somebody of Arthur's type of life got in it so long there's no way out? There's ways out. You just, sometimes it's easier to know, go with what you know instead of what you don't know. And that's a really hard proposition for folks. I mean, think of it as like a person who has been in a job for a long time that they can't stand. There is the chance to leave that job and find something else. It may not be exactly what you want. Uh, you may have to rebuild a bunch of stuff, but the option is there. A lot of times people will take what they have because they know it's a known quantity. It's something they can anticipate. They know what it means. They know the, who they are relative to it. Cutting that loss and going elsewhere is a lot scarier for folks than people think. So many people talk about change and how badly they want it. And when people are actually confronted with the change, with changes and opportunity, they will often turn it away. Uh, unless they're fully prepared to take it on. Because change, as much as we may idealize it and love the concept of it, humans don't like it. Change is hard, even if it is for the better. Give me a hand here. Got your knife? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Easy. Not too close. What the hell is this? Shoot the bear. Oh my god. Over here, Arthur. You're fine, old man. Of course I'm fine. It's, it's nothing. Ugh. Nothing at all. <laughs> Thank you. I think. <laughs> that was fun. <sighs> you know what, Arthur Morgan? I'm a little old and beaten up to be after the biggest game. You can have this. What is it? It's a map. A man in a bar gave it to me. Well, I stole it from him, but that's another story. <laughs> he said it, it told him where to find some real big animals. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You saved my life, Arthur. <laughs> I think I'm going back to camp to lick my wounds. <laughs> you coming, or you gonna track that monster? Well... You coming or not? I don't mind. I'm coming with you. <laughs> Let's get going then. Man, I give Jose a lot of credit there. I think when he says lick my wounds, I think he's talking about coming to terms with reality of the fact that perhaps he's just not young and spry enough to hunt down a bear. And I actually give Jose a lot of credit here for saying that, right? For recognizing, you know what? I don't have it in me anymore. I, I think there is real um, courage in some ways in people admitting that. It's okay to admit that aging's got your goat. That maybe you just don't have it in you like you used to. And I think some people view the reality of coming to terms with that sort of thing as giving up. 
or as weakness. It's just development. And instead of Hosea being stupid about it and saying, no, no, I got this. I'm fine. I blah. He's like, you know what? I got to come to terms with the fact that this just isn't for me anymore. My life's in a different place now. I got different stuff that matters to me. And I'm going to give this to you, Arthur. You do with it what you want. I'm going to go figure something else out. That's I admire that. I really admire that. He's willing to take it in the chin, realize that how, how scary facing that bear was, and says, you know what? I got other stuff I want to do with my life. I don't need to be doing this. That takes strength. That takes real character. And I think all of us could learn a little something from that. I mean, I'm all for pushing through and trying to accomplish your goals and stuff. But when the reality is that you're just not there, you just don't have the skill set, you've aged past your ability to do something like this, it is okay to admit that and figure out what to replace it with. And that's what my man Jose is doing. Good for him. Let's see if Dutch gives us any crap about disappearing like that. I don't need another. We gotta be out there making money speech. We were just out scoping a lead. He doesn't need to know it was a big furry one. Well, thanks, Arthur. I probably owe you one. Don't worry about it. I need to head out to Emerald Ranch soon. Look into something. See you later. That is super interesting. I'm telling you, man. The amount of stuff that comes out in just tiny little linguistic things. That reframe there says so much about Dutch and the group. Because we're talking about Arthur and Hosea here. Guys that have been with this gang for a long time. And when, when presented with the frame of this is something that we're doing for our own self-edification... They immediately think, oh, Dutch ain't going to go for that. And then as soon as Hosea says, no, 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 we'll reframe it. We'll, we'll say that we were chasing a lead. That's in the spirit of the group. The betterment of whatever it is. That's what Dutch will be okay with. It shows us that dissent, self-indulgence, is indeed perceived as the antithesis of the group and its survival and how you belong in it. So autonomy is not good for the group. Chasing leads for the benefit of the group is. Dutch is expecting that people basically lose themselves into the group, yet Dutch differentiates himself from the group as the leader. You got to be real careful of shit like that. I, as the leader, get to be separate of the group, but you all are part of the group to be absorbed and to not have any self, like, not have any autonomy within. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. And it comes out in that tiny little exchange between Hosea and Arthur. I mean, you got to watch for that stuff. What are the frames that make things we do palatable for other people? Morning, Arthur. Where's my hat? I guess I could just go to my to my tent. I am mighty glad to be out of that cold, Mr. Morgan. Me too. Alrighty. You have no outfits suitable for cold weather on your horse. Well, I guess we're not going to go to cold weather. What's up, Miss Grimshaw? No? Okay. Nobody wants to greet me. 
All right, where are we going? Let's go. I vote we take a little ride. How much money do I got on me? I am getting too old for this gallivant. <laughs> me too. Hmm. You seem chipper. But where there's life, there's hope, my friend. And? We've been thinking about our problem all wrong. All wrong. That's all. Meaning? All in good time, my friend. All in good time. <laughs> Always the show, man. Anyway, I won't disturb you. Whatever you say. Morning, T. Good morning, Arthur. Interesting. Hundred twenty-six bucks. Uh, all right. I want to go into town, Mr. Arthur. I told Dutch. I feel I should tell you. I saw some of Combs boys riding around. Down here, what they want? I have no idea. They see you? I don't think so. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me know, Karen. Mm hmm. Okay. How are you? Let's go to town. I want to sell some stuff. And then we're going to go. Uh, we'll go to one of these towns. Reverend. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, boy. Let's go to. We're gonna go to Valentine. We'll grab this wanted poster and we will get. Uh. Go to the old general store. Okay. By the way, chat, thank you all for being here. I appreciate you taking some time on your Monday night to hang out for this bonus stream. It means a lot to me. If you're watching the VOD right now, uh, thank you so much for watching the VOD. I appreciate if you take the second to like the video. It helps with the algorithm, helps with discoverability. If you think this is a series that more people should come in contact with, please share my stuff. I want you guys chill. Thank you so much, friends, for being here and for supporting what I do. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Those are down in the description. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing and you feel inclined to assist the stream financially, memberships and tips are greatly appreciated but never required. Your presence is what means the most to me. All right, general store. Oh, shit, it's our friend the veteran. Hey, what's up, buddy? I want to say hi to him. Hello, mister. Hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Mister. I never learned your name. I never did. You're like a brother. But I didn't learn your name. And I said to myself, Mickey, you never learned that fella's name. Now, you'll never see him again. And you'll be sad. Like when your poppy passed, because you slept on it. Hmm. What's your name, mister? I'm Arthur. Arthur? Arthur? My uncle's name was Arthur. Uncle Arthur, we called him on account of his name. It's a fine name, a strong name, like a king. You could be my king, Mr. Arthur. Yes, you could. Well, I don't know about that, but I love that. We called him Uncle Arthur on account of his name. <laughs> I like that guy. Come on, man. 
You can talk to him. He's a nice guy. You can tell he just wants to connect. I like it. Alright, let's get back in. Arthur is king. Doing, Uncle? Go ahead and call your mama for all I care. Uh, take it easy. I got lumbago. <laughs> Should have thought about <laughs> that earlier. You're pathetic, old man. What's the deal here, Uncle? You could have stepped in. I thought you had it covered. Just wait till you're old. I'll be at camp if you need me. I'm sorry. Is there a problem here, Uncle? Maybe try keeping your mouth shut next time. Oh, come on. <laughs> You'd all be bored as rocks without me. Whoa. Mister. Howdy. I can't clean up all your messes, Uncle. Boy. And if you know you got lumbago, you shouldn't be starting shit. Grab this wanted poster. If I ain't mistaken, you're looking for a bounty. Look no further than that wall, son. Yes, sir. $25 reward. Ellie and Swan. Wanted alive for questioning. Nasty individual. Ellie and Swan. A reward of $25 will be paid for the arrest of Ellie and Swan, wanted for the crime of matricide. The above amount will be paid immediately for the delivery of the prisoner, wanted alive for questioning. Known as the Black Widow, she is seen in the Cumberland Falls area with an unknown male who may be manipulating her. All information or reward claims to be addressed to Sheriff C. Malloy, Valentine Sheriff's Office. Cool. That one? They say she's sleeping rough near Cumberland Falls. And what's more, they say she ain't sleeping alone. Oh, I got it. Okay, Ellie Ann Swan at Cumberland Falls. We got enough crap around here from the livestock. I will right, deal with that later. Howdy. I don't need to go to the doctor. Mister? Although there's a question mark in the doctor's office, so why don't we go check that out? Welcome, sir. You new patient? Gum, candies, tobacco. All the good stuff are on the shelves behind my counter. Tonics and medicines are on the table over there. Everything else, you should see the catalog. I do love me the catalog, sir, but I don't have time to do any reading right now. I want to know what this question mark is. I can't get in there. Hmm. Hello, sir. Hello. What are you doing, sir? Look at this guy counting that money. Found a hidden operation. You can now rob the shop's side business. Oh, I don't know that I feel too inclined to do that. Not right now, anyway. I'm not. I'm not hard up for cash. Good to know, though. Good to know. You got some nefarious happenings going down at the medicine place. 
let's get to the right. general store. I need some stuff. I need to sell some stuff. Back for some more provisions. Yeah, Howdy, sir. I do indeed. I'd like to sell. Righty. Let's see what you're selling. What? You don't want to buy my stuff? Hair pomade, gun oil. I don't want to sell you that. Coffee, I don't want to sell you that. I don't want to sell you any of this shit. Sir, I'm going to need you to buy my other stuff. I do declare that I would potentially like to buy a shirt if you don't mind. Everything in that is available for purchase. Thank you, sir. Okie dokie. Let's go to clothing. Let's take a look at shirts. Hmm. The everyday over shirt. Ooh. Ooh. We got a purple shirt. I do declare. Our dress shirts are fancy. And we don't carry old or unsightly patterns that aged or infirm still cling to. Assuming they remain in fashion while drifting into some dim-witted tirade that exhibits their failing faculties. Our shirts are made for fine trade, for no better barometer to a man's character exists than his shirt. I think I read that last time. I get all kinds of coots come in here. All right. Something. So let's take a look at the union suit. We got this in purple, sir. Ah. Ah. Your boy needs purple. A French dress shirt. Oh, that's a little too fast. That's a little too fancy for me. Eh, nope. Everyday shirt. Eh. You like that? I mean, I, I like this, but I don't... Eh. Oh. Nice. Absolutely treating myself. Absolutely. All right, now we got to get a matching pair of pants. Ooh, chat. I don't. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. Do I indulge? Do I indulge in a vest? I. I don't know. I. Ooh. Ooh. No. 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 We're gonna pass on the pass on that. Our finest tailor has made our fantastic line of trousers, and indeed, when you pull on a That's pair of our heavy, these days. all wool English clay worsted pants, you will find yourself absent-mindedly running your hand down your inner thigh, feeling the sumptuous, shapely design as a cloth forms to your warm skin and body. A great many people mark, a great many people remark at the attention they garner when wearing a pair of our tailor-made trousers from very fine imported French cashmere with neat, narrow black stripe with raised effect. Those go pretty fast. Two imported, all-wool, genuine Vicuna black chivio. Make no mistake, for there is no better wearing material made in any mill, or we would have discovered them and offered to buy every stitch I sell out of that they can produce fast. yet at not one penny profit. If they don't agree with this offer, we will orchestrate their demise, for our customers are our primary concern. Jobbers across the country sell these pants for twice the price. We have fancy patterns in dark, medium, and light shades of trousers, depending on the style you require and how often you soil your pants. Our goods are guaranteed in every respect. Should a pair rip or lose a button, take them off and ship them to us, and we will replace them immediately in four to six months. My pa got killed in this here store. What the people the are shut up, storekeep. What the people are saying? Quote: These pants sent you sent me are keeping me warm today. They fit perfectly and are admired by my neighbor, who called over to me yesterday and was delighted by them, asking to feel the quality and stitching. Her husband is taken ill six months ago, and she frequently watches me from her front porch while I am working outside, and the heat has required me to remove my shirt. Yours very truly, N.L. Gay. You like that? Okay, I like that. Re all right, let's, uh, let's take a look at jeans. Denim jeans, reinforced with rivets. All of our garments are built to last. We cannot begin to mention one 
half of the accolades we receive about these jeans. I love the salesmanship on all of this. It's just it just makes me so happy. Not into that style. Some saddle jeans, nah. Everyday pants. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Those go pretty fast. Although I kind of like the corduroys I'm wearing. Ooh, ooh. I'm also wearing chaps. Ranch pants. Oh shit. That's mighty popular these days. I do declare, chat. Oh, you can go full purple. I don't know that I want to go full purple though. Ooh, baby. Fancy pants. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Town pants. Nah. All right, maybe we'll take a look at some boots. We are the leader in, have your eye on that. in boots, shoes, in, in shoes, boots, and rubbers. Too many men expect a kangaroo or a fine calf shoe to service them as well as a plow shoe. This is an absurd notion. A thin shoe shouldn't be expected to perform the same service as one intended for rough wear either on the street or in the saddle. We offer elegance and perfection in fine footwear, such as child's kids, kid button, ball bearing bicycle shoes, riding pants, sportsman's boots, preacher's boots, classic roper boots, ladies' opera slippers, and ladies' beaver congress shoes. Got into a hell of a fuss with his old lady. Additionally, we carry a lot of corn cure shoes that alleviate the suffering inflicted by many footwear that cramps feet and does not allow them to lie in their natural shape, instead forming painful corns and ingrown nails. Your local shoe dealer is likely selling you factory seconds, which are inferior quality of goods. So they may reap the tidy profit while you wear uncomfortable low-grade goods like some indigent alms person. Upon realizing this, when you call on their Being shop, you will correctly now, decipher depend on you. their warm smile is nothing more than an exultant, exultant bombasket smirk similar to that of a wolf licking its lips and a new wanders into its den. We realize that... <laughs> to, it is more convenient to purchase boots from a local dealer in town rather than wait several weeks for your order to arrive by coach freight. However, the few cents you save over time adds up. We would like to offer our thanks to our delightful patrons for their liberal patronage and loyalty. Do not put your shoes Lost on the, the stove. Last night, Lordy, what a racket was coming out of them rooms. Nor on the steam pipe or register. If they are damp, dry them in front of the fire near the wood-burning kitchen stove. Leather can burn even when wet. Every pair warranted. This is so great. I just, everything about this. The preacher's boots. Oh, I got chaps on, so you can't really see the boots that well. Nope. That's going to be a hard no there with the grinder boots. Plated quick draw boots. Ooh. Ooh. Those go pretty fast. Do they? Deluxe. Oh, baby. Now that feels a little indulgent here. $29. $29. Classic Roper boots. Ooh, I like the suede. Old West boots. Oh, man, I like these, like, steel-toed ones. Got the crocodile boots. Valentine's been a rough kind of town, as long as I can remember. I don't like the quick draws. Tornado boots. Nope. Sleeked riding boots. Ooh, we got like a like a purple. Fourteen ninety five. Popular these days. I do declare. All right. Uh, we'll do hats and then we'll get the hell out of here. Bulldogger hat. Ooh, in purple. Those go pretty fast. Y'all are getting me with this purple. It seemed a little worn, though. Ooh, the flat cap. Where's backwards baseball hat? Ooh, the estate boss. Look at that. Crusher hat? No. Big city hat? No. Warren Gambler's hat. I do like that. It's 
Not a bad looking hat. That's mighty popular these days. I don't know if that quite fits my aesthetic. The Paragon Town hat. Nope. Too fancy. Too fancy. Big Valley hat. Oh. You like the look of that one, huh? Yes, sir. I, mo I most certainly do. Ooh, the Big Valley hat. Y'all. This is important, man. We gotta look good. Military scout hat. That's not bad. I like that. A I like that, that band on the Panama hat. Hmm. Nope. All right, I'm thinking. Nope. I really like the big valley hat. I kind of like the flat cap though too. I sell out of that pretty fast. Like that's that's I, I like it because it's different. Like everybody wears cowboy hats. This is a little bit of a different look. Oh, this big valley hat is so nice, though. It's so nice. Those go pretty fast. Get it with this nice strap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Okay. Yes, indeed. Fine leather suspenders. Oh, we got pur oh, purple suspenders. Let's go. Seem a bit taken with that. Okay. All right, I got to get out of here, man. Can I get you anything else? Look around. Oh, that is... Come on, chat. Come on. I mean, this is, this is a man who knows how to get dressed. That is, that is, uh, look at this majestic sunset. Your boy's wearing his purple shirt. Absolutely. Now I'm a little bit pissed that they didn't buy my shit. I might have to figure out where they're going to buy that stuff. Because your boy needs a little bit of money before he goes out. Uh, now, perhaps... Uh, I don't know if the doctor's going to buy that stuff. I don't know why the doctor... If the general store ain't going to buy it... Back. Sure, what you got? Yeah, see, I don't know who's going to buy that shit. Best dressed man in Valentine. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Evening. I'd hire me. We got a come gunsmith on. over here. Mm, do come in. How do you do, sir? Oh wait, you're that fellow who had to fight with Tommy outside of Smithfields? <sighs> yep. People are still talking about that fight. I ain't. Well, fair enough. Neither's Tommy. Anyway, how can I help you today? Uh, I would like to. Why don't we enhance your gun? See like how much can... more can do. You know what? Bet you you could use some rifling on this thing. Ooh. I can purchase me a scope? That's going to be great. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh! Oh, chat. Oh, chat. Do I indulge? Dangerous. Yes, I do. Let's go. <whistles> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You want to make this really yours? 
Give it a personal engraving. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeah, yep. I would like to purchase that red. Yes, indeed. Oh, man. Oh, Jacob man. Worth is a friend of mine. I admire him, but he's just about the worst poker player in all of that. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Thank you, sir, for Peter I'd Cartridges. Up on extra ammo. Express 60, high velocity 60. Two bucks. It doesn't hurt to stock up on ammo. Thank you, you sir. Know. All right. I've had my fair share of big nights in Smith. Thank you, sir. A lot of fellers doing a king. I'm so poor. We just, we just, that money was burning a hole in my pocket. I needed to, needed to do something. Let's go, uh, let's go ride over to, uh, let's go over here. Let's go see old Javier Escuela. Or do we, no, let's go get Micah. Let's go get Micah. We'll do a night ride to go get Micah. As much as I don't like him. What's up, Viking? Oh baby. Alright, we are we are outfitted. We look good. Micah got himself in trouble. Let's go get him. We'll do a night ride. We'll set up camp. And then we'll do a little morning uh little morning rendezvous with Micah see what see what the deal is you know one more time chat if you haven't had a chance to hit the like button on this video please do so I have a sense that we'll have a bit of analyzing to do here with Micah you best clear off we got a problem Knuckleheads hold me up at this bridge. That's a problem for you. I needed to use my new gun anyway. That was the first time I've used that. I actually didn't mean to use that. But hey, we got it done. These guys looted. Anything I can get out of this? Steal their gear? Not like they'll be needing it. Oh shit, their horse died. Search the saddlebag. Oh shit. What we got here? Potent miracle tonic. Some gin. Some salted venison. Good shit. All right, fellas. Thank you kindly for blocking the road so I can make myself some money. Come on, Steve. Let's go. Yeah. I don't know how those guys knew that I was, unless I'm that recognizable to them. No mercy. So Hothead Micah, here's what I'm anticipating, Chad, as we make our ride. Micah does not do well when people bail him out of stuff. Micah is all bravado. My sense is that he is not going to be thrilled that I'm showing up to help him out. And he is not going to want to admit weakness. 
think we just need to be cognizant of the fact that my man is a bit of a loose cannon. He hasn't done particularly well with Arthur. He doesn't seem to get along with him. So me showing up to bail him out may not be his ideal because it may be that he has to admit that I'm in a position of power. And to this point, Micah doesn't really seem to do well with that kind of thing. I got you, ma'am. I got you. What's going on here, madam? <laughs> Jesus, Sir, Arthur. Please help me out of here. Oh, oh, thank the Lord you showed up when you did. He said he'd do to me. It's all right, ma'am. It's over now. Thank you. Again. Yeah, get out of here. Oof. All right, let's go see what that asshole had on him. Uh, I don't know what my honor is, and to be completely honest, I don't really care. Um, I'm just playing how I'm playing, and whatever oh, honor shakes out here. to be, that's what it shakes out to be. I don't have, like, a... I'm not going for a particular type of honor. If people like the decisions I make, cool. If they don't, well, too bad. But, yeah, I'm not going to be ch I'm not gonna be checking my honor throughout the game. I'm not worried about it. We'll know my honor based on how people uh, respond to me. Yeah. Good night, Blushing. All right, I want to set up camp on the other side of this river. And then we'll go get Micah in the morning. Easy. over there sure is oh what a beautiful morning holy cow man okay boy let's go let's go let's go get micah friend yeah easy boy easy easy <laughs> Hi, right, folks. A nice little stagecoach there. I love Dutch lack of father, but in many ways, I love Hosea even more. In the Stillwater Jail, I lie. 
He's kind and fair and like a human being. Dutch is something else. This bear was also something else. God damn, it's so hard to read Arthur's writing. Size of a goddamn hotel. It was, and it was mean with it. All right, so Arthur feels somewhat closer to Hosea than he does to Dutch. I could see that. I mean, Dutch acts in a way that kind of keeps people at a distance. It's, Hosea doesn't really seem to do that. Well, I could believe that, Ellie. I mean, Hosea seems to be a lot more, like, on the ground, you know? Dutch is all, like, up in the clouds. All right, Micah. I'm coming for you, brother. Howdy, folks. Just taking a look. We're with the Appleseed Timber Company. Head farming. We're still getting started on this site, but we should have some fine big valley lumber for sale very soon if you're interested. I'll keep that in mind. We should be further along by now, but what can you do? I mean, <laughs> look at these dolts. There's not a brain between them. Listen, you got any supplies for sale? Food? Medicine. Starting to run low. I can't spare anyone to go into town. Not the way things are going. I'd be happy to pay premium for them. Sure. No! Buy my rings and stuff, sir! Sell you coffee for 58 cents? I don't know. Oh, man. Ah! I'll sell you some bourbon. How's that? And, uh, I'm uh, sorry, sir. I think that might be all I can spare. <laughs> sorry, man. Appreciate it. That should help keep us going. Sell supplies to the foreman for profit at the Appleseed Timber Company. All right. Y'all seem all right. Ain't gonna worry too much about them right now. We got Micah to go get to. Come on, boy. Medicine, yes. Yeah, see, I mean, hey, they can use some bourbon. Why not? Howdy, sir. Oh, shit. Easy, Arthur. Nope, not at all, Cricket. Just because Jose is like a father figure to uh, Arthur doesn't mean he has the right to triangulate himself. Not at all. It's So the reason that what Hosea did is problematic is because Hosea is the one that initiated it. I mean, Arthur's saying, hey, Hosea, can I get your opinion on something? That's, that's better than Hosea saying you need to get over it. No, just because he's perceived as a father figure doesn't make that better. Uh, in fact, we sometimes afford family too much leeway with, in terms of like violating our boundaries and stuff. I need assistance. Please, sir, please stop. Oh, I beg you. What's the matter, man? <laughs> what can I do you for? Oh, I'm in bad sorts here. I took a little jolt and have managed to get myself hopelessly lost. I am staying in Strawberry. If you could just guide me back. Can't think of a good reason to say no. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. We're going to Strawberry anyway, well, so... Well, after you. What possessed That's me to come out here, I'll never know. <laughs> come on, sir. What are you doing out here anyway? This clearly ain't your natural habitat. I don't uh, know, I'm just visiting. Uh, I, I'm from New York City, actually. You don't say. <laughs> Oh, yes. There was some talk at the country club about this burgeoning little resort town called Strawberry. So I thought it might be quite the trip to see what all the fuss was. Perhaps make a few investments while it was still undervalued. Turns out I was made the fool. Not enjoying it, Dan? 
It's a town of splinters. If you could call it much of a town at all, I'd hardly stepped off the carriage and I'd taken in the whole place. I suppose some might call it charming. <laughs> Let me tell you, charm is not worth much these days. You show me a timber frame shack, and I'll show you Broadway. Okay. You have this mayor, a quite intolerable blowhard. A little bespoke woodwork, and he thinks this is a cultural hub? The man's completely deluded. Well, I should give him some credit. He must be quite the salesman. He did get me out here, after all. More fool me. Now I'm tromping through the leaves in the muck with some cowboy. Uh, no, no offense. Little taken. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why would why would Arthur be upset about that? That fits with what Arthur says about himself. Arthur thinks he's some piece oh, yeah. of shit lowly cowboy. This guy says I'm with a cowboy. You think Arthur would say like, "Yes, sir. I know I'm a piece of shit." He doesn't say that. He's like little taken. He takes a little offense to that. Why what, what? That doesn't make sense. Does look familiar. Wow, we walked all of like 150 feet, sir. Come on. You're by the side of a main road. Although I guess if this guy's like, if he's some like super rich guy who generally has people navigate for him, maybe I can see how he'd get lost here. Howdy, sir. Well, I don't know why Arthur would care much about what this guy has to say, but I mean, we're helping him out. He's got his fancy pants. Oh, are we close to town? Oh, yes. We are, sir. I know, it's quite kind of me to help this man out. You've rescued me from the depths! You seem quite the resourceful sort, sir. If for some reason you plan to spend any time in Strawberry, you may want to look into that gabbing mayor. Something is definitely off with him. Come on. All right. I'll keep that in mind. Maybe stay in town for now, huh? A rock and a hard place. Thanks anyway. Uh, New Yorkers. Jesus. <laughs> All righty. The town of Strawberry. Let's see what's going on with Micah. We're going to Now we don't know many folk here, so we're going to try to keep a low profile. Something tells me that's not going to last super long with Micah, but we'll do our best. I would be interested to see if I can... Let's hitch the horse up here. be interested to see if I can sell in the general store here. Okay. Yeah, yeah! General store. Doesn't seem like I've seen you before. Howdy, sir. Now, if you really want to impress the mayor here, I'd pick up some grooming supplies for yourself and a couple of things by the door for your horse. You'll be turning heads. Apparently, those Blackwater robbers are still on the loose. They got that whole town on lockdown. Well, let's see. If you want to impress the mayor, you ought to... Hmm. Interesting. Why do I care about the mayor? Thank you. All right, chat. Here we go. Wish me luck. Coming up the old jail. Yep. 
Hello, sir. I've, uh, I've come from Blackwater. I'm on the trail of a dangerous gang, Como Driscoll. Heard you had some sort of incident. We don't deal with bounty hunters around here, son. I, I was just wondering if I could get a description. Well, they weren't friends. They got in a fight, two men got killed. Now, one of them's an idiot, the other's some kind of dumb mick, so maybe them's your boys. You can look right enough when we hang them. Thank you, Sheriff. Mike, just shut the me? hell up. Arthur! Arthur! Hello, old friend. Had a good time, did you? <laughs> you gonna get me out of here? I ain't decided yet. Real funny. Oh, I ain't joking, cowpoke. I heard so much bluster out of your mouth these last six months. And now, I got an opportunity to watch you be silenced. Well, you gotta do something. Why? I always looked up to you, Arthur. Well, that's your first mistake. Listen, there's one little problem. There's only one of me, and there's a whole town full of people wanting to see you swing. You got to do something, Arthur. You got any dynamite? Dynamite? No, I don't have dynamite, Micah. This wall just needs some good force. Now, okay, so this exchange between Micah and Arthur is maybe a little bit interesting. I, it's hard to tell. So when people are desperate and they're boxed in, like being in jail like this, about to be hung, people will say anything in order to get out. Like, you would be amazed the things that would come out of your mouth if you're in this dire of a situation. You will tell people whatever you think they need to hear. And Micah saying, I always looked up to you, says a little something I think about what he thinks Arthur might think about him. Which is that maybe he thinks that Arthur thinks that that would be a compliment. But there's two reasons why it wouldn't. One... Arthur's self-image doesn't really align with that, which is why he says that was your first mistake. And two, I don't think Arthur has much respect for Micah, so why would he care if Micah looks up to him? And I guess three, he would also look at it and say like, okay, well, you're in jail. Of course you're going to say that shit because I am in a position of power here to get you out. Now, I will give Micah some credit for not being Mr. Bravado. You know, I'll do whatever it takes. I can get out of this, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's vulnerable enough to say to Arthur, I need your help. But it's interesting what we learn about what Arthur and Micah think about each other. It doesn't seem like they think much of each other at all. I think Micah's just saying that because he's in a position where he needs to get out. All right, let's figure out how to get him out of here. Uh, I mean, dynamite's not the way. Mm, am I able to go back in? See what happens if I go back in. Maybe I can sweet talk Maybe my that way in. Steam donkey over there still works. Howdy, fellas. No, no, we're done here. Just get the hell out. I'm gonna give you one more chance to get smart. Walk on out of here. Yes, sir. Jesus. All right. I wonder if I could like. I don't think those bars. Those bars are probably too strong for me to hitch a horse to them grab them and pull them out. Alright, let's think. Alright, let's pull our horse back here. Boy. 
love that we're doing this in the rain. Nice and easy. Draw a carbine repeater from the horse, horse cargo. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Dynamite just doesn't seem right. I have dynamite on me though, don't I? I do. Oh my God, I do. step back a bit we're gonna do it i need to get steve out of here though steve get out of here steve steve oh god <coughs> i just killed steve i'm so sorry steve come on oh my god he wasn't odrisco Oh, shit! I should have put my bandana on first. I should have left you to hang. We're in it now, Morgan. What do you want to do? Get out of the way. Come on. Everything you got. We should be long gone by now. They got something of mine. I ain't leaving without. This is it. That guy's a tank. Oh, my God. Shit, more of the bastards. We're about to clean out this whole town. you doing Micah Hello Maddie They had something of mine My guns I showed him and I'll show the rest of this town You have really lost it this time This way. 
Steve's fine. I do feel inclined to pick up as much shit as I can. All right, let's go. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. Dude, we are never going back to Strawberry. Micah. Holy crap. Okay. Woo. Let's get out of here before we get any more on our tail. That was some good shooting, Morgan. I got to hand it to you. What the hell was that you pulled back there? Got a bit wild, all right. Wild. Making a house call in the middle of all that? Ain't much I care about more than those guns. That much is clear. Who was that fella? Skinny? Yeah, we ran together for a while. Did a bank job down south. Didn't end well. I saw how it goddamn ended. He was gonna let me hang. I'm starting to wish I had. And you owe Lenny too. He hadn't found us in time. Yes, you will all be thanked profusely, I promise. Yeah, well, you're lucky Dutch has got your back. For some unknown reason. Damn. Well, hey, Micah was willing to say thank you. I think we finally lost. I hope so. I'm giving you a holster. It's my way of saying thank you. And thank you. There I was, having a dull day only for you. To liven it up by letting me help you shoot up <laughs> half a town. You're a funny fella, Arthur. Real funny. <clears throat> why you act all sour all yeah, the time? Yeah, well, you ain't funny at all. So why you gotta act like the court jester? Right, listen. I'm sorry, but we're family now. Arthur, you and me. <clears throat> Sons of Dutch. Makes us brothers. <clears throat> Sometimes. Brothers make mistakes. I'm heading back to my little camp where I'm back a strawberry. Come see me. Maybe I can make things up to you. You ain't heading back to Dutch? No, I've been a bad boy, Arthur. I ain't seeing Dutch till I can bring him a peace offering. <clears throat> Bye now. Yeah. That's interesting. That he doesn't want to go back to Dutch until he can show that he's got something to offer. So Dutch is obviously the tie that binds, sure. I mean, I can't decide if that's the, if it's that Micah has enough insight into the group to know that Dutch is not going to take him back because he messed up. Or if he just doesn't want to be part of the group. You know, Micah seems to have this desire to be a leader. We've talked about this before. And maybe it's that he doesn't want to be back with us and Dutch because he has to fall back in line. I mean, it's very much similar to the whole idea of, like, after you leave home for a long time, then you go back home and you kind of slip into your old role in the in the hierarchy. I think Micah would deal with the same thing. So if Micah's had a chance to go out 
and flourish a little bit and find something for himself and define himself as being outside of the group. Maybe it's that he doesn't want to go back because that's he's just not into returning to being the guy that everybody kicks around and gives a hard time and seizes the you know knucklehead idiot. And I can't say I'd necessarily blame him. He wants to come back when he maybe has more of a position of power. He's got some leverage. Maybe he can boost himself in the hierarchy relative to Dutch. It's hard to know. But I actually appreciate that Micah was willing to say, like, thank you. Like, he wasn't a dick about it. He acknowledged that he made mistakes. I mean, we got a little bit of a tender moment there from him. Granted, it was very chaotic what we came out of. But I give him a lot of credit for owning up to it. You know, we're brothers of Dutch. You know, Dutch is basically a father figure for us is what he's saying. But... You know, at what point is our indebtedness to Dutch going to get us in trouble? Hmm. But I would say, like, I got a little bit more respect for Micah there. We got, we got a little bit more of a diverse sense of who he is and what he's capable of. And I and I give him credit for that. What the hell's going on over here? Yeah. I mean, we just shot up an entire town though. That does not feel great. I ain't a fan of that, let me tell you. My bad. I didn't realize I was getting shot there. That's fun. That's the second time we've gotten effed up by the Odriscoll's, ma'am. Oh, what's up, K-Girl? Hmm. By the way, I'm eating candy corn. I freaking love this stuff so much. Oh. Well, so the family thing with Micah, too, I can kind of understand that. Like I think the gang would say that we're all family. I don't I don't know like him saying the brother thing. I don't know if it's manipulative so much as it is just sort of making an observation about the fact that like if we're going to be in the same group this is just how it is. We're brothers. You know, you bailed me out. I mean, I made the choice to bail him out. I didn't have to do that. So I don't think I can show my face in strawberry again, though. That just doesn't seem... Yeah. Yeah, I thought, Steve, I thought I killed Steve, too. But I couldn't get on him to get him out of there. But we're good. Alright, let's go get Javier Escuela.
There we go. West Elizabeth bounty, $85. Holy shit. That's a huge bounty. There, friends. How many? A lot. Uniforms everywhere. You see Sean? No. I don't think so. Damn it. Where's Trelawney? Who knows? Just keep your eyes open. Hey. Right. Where is that little Irish best? I'm not quite sure. Trelawney's off trying to find out. Anyone been in the black water? See how things lie? Place is crawling with Pinkertons, bounty hunters, and ah. pictures of Dutch and Hosea. Uh, well, we got a lot of money sitting in that town. And that's where it's gonna remain for now. Why haven't they hanged Sean, I wonder? I think he's bait. Well, they wanna trial him publicly. Gentlemen, Sean is being moved up the upper Montana, then to a federal prison out west. Damn. Well, we can't be rescuing people from some federal prison. We either rescue him now or we cut him loose. We're not cutting anyone loose. Of course not. Ike Skelding's boys are moving him to a camp nearby before handing him over to the government. So, I guess... We need to stop them before they get to camp. Charles, why don't you head up on the north side? And we'll head up on the other side of the valley and meet you. That way we have them in either direction. Javier, Josiah, come on. Let's go see. You know, Arthur, the government, or people whom the government like, seem to be very angry. Sure. Well, we'll rescue Sean and then we'll get ourselves lost good and proper. It's a big country. I hope so. Boy, we're putting ourselves at massive risk to get Sean out. Massive. You know, but when you're in this kind of situation, like, it, I think it is easy for us to say, all right, well, we'll cut and run. That's too much for us. And, you know, in a lot of these scenarios with groups where you got to bail a guy out and it puts everybody at massive risk, I think it's very easy for us to ask ourselves, is it worth it? And I think you have to look at it from a group dynamic and cohesion standpoint. If we don't do this, it instills doubt in everybody of the group of, is there a threshold where something I do, other than like treason of the group, means that I will be left behind? And if you want people to have undying loyalty to a group, you absolutely have to present that we will get you no matter what. We will make the attempt. That's how you get people to continue their buy-in despite sometimes things going against their better interests. Because if we have any doubt instilled in the group as to the quality of a person's life or the circumstances that are very ambiguous to which we no longer will try to help you out, then why be part of the group? So even though this puts us at risk, we do have to do this for the group. Or we make a pact between the four of us that we ain't going to go get them and we're going to make up a story about how we tried. But you've got to do this if you want everybody to be in on this to the extent that they need to be in order for us to be successful as a group. 
So we gotta go for him. And that loyalty is massive, and it's what it's what makes our group tick. Follow me. Let's see if we can track down this boat. Keep your eyes open for Pinkertons. They got patrols out all over this area. Yes. South of the river, West Elizabeth isn't a very welcoming place right now. It's definitely as bad as we feared in there, Arthur. I keep hearing about this woman, Heidi McCourt. Why aren't we moving? Some young mother, they're saying, Dutch murdered on the boat. Oh, shit. I don't know about that. I wasn't there. Bad day. And no money yet, it seems. I hope you know where that is, at least. Dutch and Hosea say they do, but it's trapped in the town. There, look. I think that's our boat. All right, gentlemen. Follow me. Another ferry, huh? Keep your guns away until we know it's Sean, okay? I know what you two are like. You think they can see us? If they can, we're just three fellas out on the trail. Act natural. We'll be fine. So, you've been gone for a while. Much as I love dodging the law and sleeping in the dirt with you derelicts, I do have other business to attend to. What happened in New York? You know how life is. Never a straight road anywhere. Especially with you. Nice to know I'm missed, though. Have you run out of people to rob? Oh, we'll never run out of people to rob. But without me, you'll not find the caliber of victim that I find. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, we should keep it down. Come on, let's keep them in sight. You all right, Javier? You're quiet. He hasn't stopped talking since we left you in Valentine. <laughs> it's the longest ride of my life. Cute, dear boy. Very cute. up the pace a bit apparently there's a camp somewhere around here where the bounty hunters meet and transfer before continuing out west I imagine that's where they're headed just because I still I don't know enough about these guys to know like why all of this you know like sean i get because he's part of the group we want to make sure we take care of him trelawney i guess is a person that has connections we're still just so early in understanding who these guys are and what makes them tick for me to have like a full understanding of exactly why it's so important for arthur to be in on this with sean besides the fact that he shares the group with us Something tells me this is going to be hey, intense. Hey, they pulled into shore. All right, let's take a close look. Binoculars, gentlemen. So who are these bounty hunters? I don't know too much about Ike Skelton's boys, but I hear they're a big crew, wild, built some reputation in the last year or two. That looks like Sean to me. Certainly kicking up enough of a fuss. Yep, that's definitely Sean. Oh, they're giving him a decent kicking. Well, you can only imagine the shit he's been giving them. Oh, yes. They're taking him up the canyon. There's Charles on the other side. Let's go. What about the other two down there? I've got an idea. Follow me. Tell. We should do this quietly if we can. Leave it to me, gentlemen. I'll go around and create a distraction. That 
you two sneak across and do the dirty on them. Okay. Crouch down out of s hey, take out your knife. Stay here. All right, I'm with okay, you, buddy. Let's move down. Don't cross until he's got their attention. Here we go. I'm doing this Hold for you, Sean. Doing his thing. Gentlemen, excuse me. Dear brothers, my wife is taken ill. Gravely ill. What's the problem? It's dear Bessie. You take She's the one on the left. Mary. Okay, come on. Stay low. I, I, I'm beside myself. I, if I lose, if I lose Bessie, I lose everything. Oh, calm down, mister. I, I can't. I can't. I, I'm having a fit. <laughs> Come on, let's get up there. Alrighty. As always, gentlemen. I think you have it from here. Come on. We got two halfway up the canyon to deal with. I assume we're gonna do that via gun. I don't want the sawed off shotgun. I want Oh no! Oh wait, no, there we go. The repeater. Hey, That's what I want. Boots you got there, eh? Oh, they're very nice. Who's the guy you got them from? Is he alive still? Come on, focus. Oh. Focus, okay. Oh boy, there's a lots of dudes here. Nice and easy. I can't wait to get back home again. Wow, all right, I guess we're just opening fire now. Soundtrack is so good. What do you got, fella? Quick! Come on, let's get up there. I'm coming, Javier. I'm coming. And yes, I am aware of that, Ellie. Platinum pocket watch. Hell yeah. Two more. Look out. Oh, shit. Damn, Javier. The camp's up this way. Come on. We got Charles, this. you take the right. I'll go left. Okay. Take him down. 
goddamn army of these bastards. How much oh, is Sean's bounty? Maybe we should There's a lot of bounty hunters. Real time. Are these guys? There's one. Let's go. Look, they run away. Okay. Let's get Sean. Hey, someone cut this rope. Me head's killing me. All right, buddy. Let me just loot some stuff real quick. I'm looting. Just, just Sean was here for like hours. He can wait a second while I get some, while I get some loot. All right. Sean will be fine. We got some moonshine, we got some cigarettes, yes sir. Come on. Can't go in there, okay. I just wanna make sure we got everything, you know? in there all right Sean I'm coming hey what are you all doing Arthur <laughs> you know you're a lot less ugly from that other angle Arthur come on <laughs> do I get a hug Arthur a warm embrace for a lost brother now found. <laughs> you know, nothing means more to me than this gang. The bond we share. It's the most real thing to me. I would kill for it. I would happily die for it. But in spite of all of that, I would have easily left you here to rot at Charles Haddon's stomach. I don't believe a word of that, Arthur. Get him out of here. You're a great man, Arthur Morgan. The kind of young whippersnapper can really admire. Oh, shut up. Right, we should split up. Javier, will you escort Mr. McGuire back to camp? Charles, best you ride separately. Be careful. There's patrols everywhere. What about you? I'm gonna see what's worth taking here. I'll meet you back there as soon as I can. All right. Okay, come on. <clears throat> Have I got stories for you? Yeah, I can't wait. <clears throat> well, I imagine y'all miss me a lot. <sighs> but fear not, the joy's back in your lives now. Huh, so, a little bit of insight into Arthur there. I love this gang. This gang is basically all I live for. It means the world to me. I would do anything for it. I live for it. I would die for it. 
this has obviously provided some level of consistent camaraderie for him that he hasn't experienced in other places. And that makes sense. I mean, 20 years of consistency and reliability, 20 years of people who have each other's back, 20 years of being able to be with your friend, 20 years of an identity. I think it's interesting to see Arthur talk about this, particularly after we saw the exchange that he had with, I think it was Martha was her name. Because it does make me wonder if part of Arthur's, what happened with Arthur, Arthur and her was either he was in the gang and he prioritized the gang and its consistency and reliability over her being potentially an unknown, although it sounds like she kind of left him. Or if after he, she left him, he found the gang. I get a sense that the gang goes back farther than that, but regardless, Arthur seems to have his identity intertwined. Mary, okay. Seems to have his identity intertwined with this group in a way that's going to be hard for him to separate it. And I think that also gives us some extra insight into why Arthur might conceptualize himself as being a bad man. This is a group of outlaws. This is a group that has literally defined itself as being the anti-law and order. We are not part of civilized society, so to speak. And so if Arthur, over 20 years, has seen this group as something he'd live and die for, is part of his identity, is who he is. This group is not something I can separate from myself, but this group is objectively bad. And Arthur has the intelligence, I think, to see what the dynamic of the group is relative to wider society. Then he basically has to conceptualize himself as being a bad man. Now, he could be good within the group, but then is good within the group actually bad because he's perpetuating a group that's bad relative to society standards? Right? So now we see good and bad get a lot more muddy. Because his identity is probably so deeply intertwined within the group. And that's the power of group dynamics. That's the power of what the identity of a of a large group does for folks. They live and die by that identity. They start to project that identity out into the world and they have to suppress anything that's going to run counter to that. Because otherwise you could be cast outside of the group. And if this is the only group that Arthur's ever known, you're basically asking him to have be cast out of a group that's taking care of him and that's not great. There's a lot of depth there. Like Arthur saying that gives me a lot more information about Arthur's orientation toward the group and how meaningful it is for him and starts to shed some light on how he sees himself. And so, yeah, okay, so he was really young when Dutch found him. So he, this is all Arthur's ever known. This is it. Shit. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. Get out of here. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Steve, stay calm. We're good. Yep. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go on a ride back to camp, and then, uh, yeah. yeah. So I think again, to, to, you know, to sort of as we ride back here to speak on this a little bit more, I think one of the major themes we're seeing here is self versus group identity, and when are the needs of an individual? When is self fulfillment? fulfillment more important than the group? When do your own personal values misalign with that of the groups? 
I think there's a lot to be said for, yeah. you know, if you're going to survive in a group like this, you almost have to forego your own personal convictions. And that is kind of the antithesis to the American ideal, so to speak, right? Like the Amer America is all about freedom to do what we want, freedom of autonomy, it's yada yada, right? Especially in this time period. Well, being in this group is the absolute antithesis to that. So this is part of why I think this promise of freedom is why it's a carrot on the stick and not something that we've achieved as a group. Because I think if we were to all actually achieve freedom and autonomy, some of us might leave the group. Some of us may decide that, you know what, I don't, I don't need this. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live this life. And as we lose numbers, we lose strength. So Dutch almost keeps everybody together by promising that we will eventually get to a point where we are free, but we never quite get there because then we get to have the group intact. Dutch gets to be a leader. We get to have whatever role we have in the group. For some, that's better than others. You know? But I, I just, I, there's going to be, I think, a tension between our group belonging and our individual values. And I think the more intelligent a person hey, is, the more reflective they are, talk, eh? the more tense that's going to be. And Arthur, I think, falls into that category. You know, it's good. We're humans. We like to be part of groups. At the same time, you got to watch out for if being part of a group starts to misalign with you in a big way. At that point, sometimes we got to. Sometimes you got to cut bait. Yeah, I don't got time for those fellas. I got to get back to camp before dark. Oh, Mona, thank you so much for the five bucks. I think a lot of people resonate with Arthur's self-loathing. Is there any advice you can give to someone who wants to break out of that and be kinder to themselves? Oh, absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mona, for the five dollars. Oh, yeah, 100%. So Arthur's self-loathing is absolutely something that people can connect with. And I think all of us have to be mindful that self-loathing and those narratives we tell ourselves are a choice. It is not a reflection of truth. And the reason I say this is because so many people believe that their self-loathing is something that they are just subject to. It's something that just happens to them. That they just have it. They can't divorce themselves from it. It's not true. More often than not, self-loathing narratives have been borrowed from others. They are created by others and in reference to others. And so the most important question that a person with self-loathing that wants to get out of it can ask themselves is, if I had more, higher self-esteem, if I had self-love, what would I say to myself instead? Probably things like, I'm worthy, I'm important, I matter, I have something to offer. Well, those are things that you don't just automatically believe one day. Those are things that you have to actually intentionally inject into your internal narrative. Those are things that you have to intentionally say. You aren't probably going to believe them at first, but until you start conversing with yourself in a more kind, patient, and loving way, you can't expect other people to do that for you. You derive self-worth from what other people tell, tell you about you. That's not great. Also, if you engage in self-loathing, you are going to fight against anybody who says, you know, you actually, you matter to me a lot and I really like you. So it starts with you. You have to, you have to rewrite that narrative that's been ingrained over a long period of time. And that takes more intention and it takes more time than people generally like. Because the thing is, is if you build up a pattern of self-loathing, you, you really solidify that narrative and it becomes like who you are and you see who you are as a stagnant thing that can't change, you've boxed yourself in. And I say that it's a choice for people to tell themselves that kind of thing and engage in that self-loathing because it empowers them to make that change if it's something that you actually want to make. Otherwise, it will be continued to be perpetuated.
doesn't just happen because we want it to. My old therapist asked me who's who whose voice I hear when I think about self-loathing or negative thoughts about myself. Is this something you recommend people pay attention to as well? I actually use that tactic all the time. So if you really get people into that, they will often hear that voice as somebody else's. Or it's become so intertwined that it sounds like them. But here's the thing. We all learn that stuff. You do not come out into the world self-loathing. That's just not how it works. You learn that. And so that means you can unlearn it. It means you can learn something else. But it does start with you. It's not easy to do, but it's important to do. You, you have to, in some ways, the fake it till you make it mantra is indeed the true here with this stuff. But yeah, if you can hear it as somebody else's, it helps you also define what's yours. Right? Like if you hear, I'm burdensome, and it sounds like your father's voice. Right? Well, that's what your father told you. It doesn't mean that's true. But people like to get into a space where they make self-loathing true and inevitable and that allows us to avoid the accountability of making that change for ourselves if we want to because we talk about it as if it's some sort of external force do you think dutch is well aware of the fact that they aren't getting the freedom he promises or could he start to believe his own lies too after so long i think it's both i think it's both i know you bastards missed me <laughs> even you arthur even you <laughs> Oh, I'm back home now, so everything's going to be okay. Uncle Sean is back, and don't you worry, Miss Grimshaw, you old crone. I'll keep them girls in line. Arthur, oh, Arthur, whip them, I will. are you seem in a good mood? I am, son. I am. Let's have some fun tonight. Let's enjoy ourselves. Are we having a party? Maybe, just a little one. Great. <laughs> and don't worry about Mr. Mr. Mrs. Mrs. Grimshaw. Back. We'll so have this camp on. running Let's like clockwork. <laughs> I love you, bastards. <laughs> have fun. Have lots of fun. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not being critical of this when I say this. But that's a hell of a tactic. That's a hell of a tactic by Dutch. Let's party. Our person's back. Let's celebrate. That is a, um, I mean, I think it's immensely important from a camaraderie thing, but it's also immensely important because it's, it sends a very clear message. Getting our people back, doing what we got to do to get them, that is a desirable behavior for the group. And from a conditioning standpoint, we want to reward desirable behavior. Let's throw a party. Let's show Arthur how important, and Javier and Charles, how important it is that they got this guy back. Let's reinforce that coming back to the group is something that you all should do. Let's make sure that it's very clear that loyalty to the group and not leaving anybody behind is what we care about. And everybody's excited about it. And that's fine, right? Like, it builds camaraderie. That's really cool. But that's a really slick move by Dutch to do this instead of taking it for granted. It puts energy into the group that says, this is what we want. This is what makes us tick. This is what we do. And we will do this for you, too. So stay with us. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. I just can't get rid of you, can I? The gang are celebrating the safe return of Sean will be unavailable for other activities for a while. I suppose. You are looking lovely. Hello. If I may say so. I could have a drink. Riding with him all the way from Blackwater to here. This stupid So, what now? Come on. How about a song? <laughs> He'll be drinking till dawn now, I bet. Listen, oh, friend. let him have some fun. Do you know He's the been through a lot. Maid? I thought you Irish enjoyed a party, Molly. Oh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I just don't need to <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You know this one, don't you? Go join <laughs> him. I Finally, Mark, what would I do to say? Then she, she was Mr. 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 M
Love it. Very nice. But how about something a little more civil? Ah, it's good to be back. I even missed you. <laughs> you old bastard. <laughs> and I missed a good excuse to celebrate. <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> Ooh. Look at me, with the bell of the ball. <laughs> Stop it, you! <laughs> Absolutely. I ain't much of a dancer. Absolutely. My pleasure. Hosea, what's up, brother? Hey, okay, Hosea. Well done, Arthur. Uh, it wasn't just me. Morgan. Reverend. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what do you want? I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Oh. This keeps happening. Man, the Reverend's a bit of a mess. Sean will make your life hell when he finds out you're an O'Driscoll. Oh, great. Just be grateful you're alive. Wow. Okay, I'll catch you later then. Then take care. Man, Arthur still calls Kieran an O'Driscoll? Oh. This is what I mean, man. When you get groups like this, you get big groups, you get what are called intra-group dynamics. And this is how you get marginalization within marginalized groups. You know, for, for a real world example, you know, in like, you know, we look at folks who are, you know, identify as LGBTQ plus IA, right? All of that, that group as being a marginalized subset relative to like straight folks. But within that community, there is intra group dynamics. Uh, one common example are like people who are bisexual are often marginalized within the LGBTQ community. And people often ask themselves like, well, how does that happen? Well, because humans are always vying 
for hierarchy, control, power, influence, all of these things. And so when we perceive folks as other or different in a way that we don't understand, one of the ways that we mitigate the dissonance we experience by that is with that is to assert power over it. So we see Kieran as an outsider who joined the group as part of survival, as opposed to because he believes what we're doing in what we're doing ideologically, and he is marginalized within our group. And we see this through the language that we use. Arthur says to Kieran, he calls him an O'Driscoll. That is absolutely exerting power over him. That is, that is us not being willing to look at an O'Driscoll as somebody who can find their way, somebody who can do better, somebody who can lead the group, somebody who has the capacity to share our values. If we allow Kieran to do that internally, then we kind of have to do that for all of the O'Driscoll group. And that's going to be a hugely difficult exercise for somebody like Arthur or Dutch to go through. So instead, we just further marginalize them and to mitigate the gray area. This is how intragroup dynamics and marginalization happens. And even though we're an oppressed group of outlaws, we still have a hierarchy. There's marginalized within marginalized. And as groups expand, we see more and more and more of it. So, you know, I think it's kind of a bummer that that's how Arthur engages with him. You know, because he said he's one of us now. Suddenly you seem much better, Marston. Don't feel too sudden to me. <laughs> Just when the drinks come out. All right, well, I should be getting on. Yep. You sure do. Do you think Arthur did that intentionally or could it have been a habit to unassociate anyone who didn't start off with them or came from another group? I think if Arthur cared enough about Kieran, he would make the effort or he would have apologized. I think Kieran not fighting against that tells me that Arthur is not the only person who's doing that. Kieran doesn't feel powerful enough to correct him. Kieran is still afraid that it puts him in danger to correct him. Very similar to how folks who use, um, you know, different pronouns than a person might use might be afraid to out themselves or put themselves in danger by correcting that person for their pronouns. Like we see power dynamics in these little exchanges. If Arthur apologizes to Kieran and says, hey, my bad, I know you're not no Driscoll. Well, then that shows that he gets it, right? It shows that Arthur's self-reflective enough to understand that dynamic. But Arthur doesn't do that. And Kieran doesn't correct him. Right? So I think we have to assume that at the very least, there is still an internal bias. There's still a subconscious bias with Arthur in him calling him O'Driscoll there. It means that Arthur hasn't done the work internally yet to fully conceptualize Kieran as one of them. There's just not, not enough respect there for Arthur to, to lean into that. And I don't know if it's because he feels pressure from the group to do that or if that's how he himself, he himself feels. But as we discussed earlier, it's hard to tell what the group versus what Arthur believes is. We too often give people in the dominant group the benefit of the doubt when they microaggress. It's important to call out microaggressions when we see it. We generally don't assume or give the benefit of the doubt to people in marginalized groups, but we almost always do to folks in dominant groups. Arthur's part of the dominant subset of this group. Arthur has the ability to call him O'Driscoll with no real repercussion. If Arthur calls him O'Driscoll and Uncle and Dutch and John Marston or anybody within earshot comes over and says, yo, he's one of us now. Stop calling him that. That's how you hold people accountable for microaggressions. It's not, it's not the marginalized person holding the dominant person accountable for it. It's fellow dominant people holding dominant people accountable to it. I think it's easy for us to look at it and go, yeah, no, Arthur just made a mistake. But he microaggressed. 
He absolutely microaggressed. Even if it wasn't intentional, that's still pretty shitty. And so Arthur needs to have that bias brought to his consciousness. He needs to understand the impact that that has. He just othered somebody within the group in a way that I would argue is not acceptable because this guy has more than shown that he's with us and that he's fine to this point. I don't really understand Arthur's motivations for that. So it's a great question because it gives the opportunity to highlight that. But that's what this looks like. It looks so innocuous, right? Like, it looks just like, like, I'm sure there is at least a person or two who are watching me talk about this right now, who are rolling their eyes and going, oh my God, Dr. Mick, are we really going to micromanage all of these blah, 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 right? Well, we're literally talking about this guy's, we're talking about this guy's identity. We're talking about who he is. He's, he's, he could run away from our group at any point in time, and he has not done that. Language is super important. Language is, how, is something that humans have that allows them to exert more or make more overt what are generally covert within other animals. So it's, it holds true for even relating to now. You know, when we microaggress, it's easy for people in dominant groups to roll their eyes at like, oh my God, is everything a microaggression? Like, I mean, there's lots of them, but we don't have to like make a huge deal out of it. You just got to do better. You just have to recognize when you've microaggressed and be like, okay, all right, that was pretty shitty. That person didn't appreciate that. Oh, with a light, light heart, I roll along. The wind broke free of my all right, well, this party was fun, but I think it's about time for me to go to bed. I'm going to shave, and I'm going to go to bed. Part 5.